Well, what we're gonna do today is since we had such a uh, Saturday, it was Chad, myself, and my grandson, and Saturday was, if it could go wrong, it went wrong. From everything from getting up in the morning, it'd be raining, and then it went from pretty much almost flat calm to east, southeast winds 15 to 20. Then it calmed down again, and then it started blowing east, northeast 10 to 15. And then the storm, storm was like right on the edge, so we ran in full speed, and uh, that was the end of our day. So I decided to teach my grandson how to throw a cast net, and he became obsessed with that. And he actually has taught himself how to throw a cast net. So Papa Todd doesn't need to throw the cast net when he's aboard, even though I, I know I will. But today we're just gonna go out for a quick session, uh, do some scouting. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm looking for, both on the Simrat and on the Humminbird. Uh, we're gonna segment this into a cooking segment with mangrove snapper that we did with my uh, grandson. I think it's gonna come out really good, so let's go see what we can find. Okay, what I did is I came to the flats to go catch bait. I'm getting ready to mix the Purina tropical fish food with just salt water. I don't use any Menahin oil or anything else like that. But what I did is I went on the flat and I searched and I listened for the bait flicking on the water. And I'll show you exactly what that, that looks like and sounds like. All right, well, we got a live well full of bait and a bucket full of bait, and we're gonna go out and scout some new areas, see what we can find. Okay, what just happened is, is I came up the ledge and in a, a new area, I didn't really see anything on my side imaging, but I saw something on the regular sonar. So I marked it on the regular sonar, but I didn't see anything on the side imaging. Now I'm gonna go by the side imaging and see if I can pick something up. It was right at the bottom of the ledge. So I'm gonna see if I can pick it up with the side imaging. Now, anytime I see anything irregular like this, I definitely wanna stop and fish it. Cause that's an indication of rocks and hard bottom. See the squiggly lines right there? So that's an indication of both. Let's see what we can do. Now what we're experiencing right now is that the tide is, is ripping in pretty good. So what we've observed on the camera before underwater is that these fish will hug the bottom and not move very much at all because they're just trying to stay in one spot. So what happens is you practically have to get that bait right in front of them to, to have them eat. So that's, I'm covering a lot of area where I'm pitching up front and then letting the, work, the bait work itself back past the boat see I'm in structure right now so I can feel the structure but like I said you're gonna have to hit that fish on the head to get him to bite so I'm definitely I'm definitely over structure and when we release the bale like that what it does is it lets that bait bounce back so we cover quite a bit of area like this see I just got bumped there but they're they're not being real aggressive so what I'll do is I'll bump it up, release some line, come tight with it again. I can feel them bumping it, but they're not, they're not wanting to take it. So I'm definitely in structure, which is good. That's what you want. But like I said, right now that tide is ripping. So they're not, they're, oh. Oh, missed them. going to be a red the way it was fighting but case in point being able to take the bait pitch it up front and let it work its way back 
when you get into an area that you know you're going to get hits or you get hits, you definitely want to make sure that you know where to throw. Let it work back to that area and be prepared to get hit. Just like that, they're eating live bait too. Smaller red grouper. This is indicating to me that I'm definitely over hard bottom, more hard bottom than I am rocks and things like that because when you start catching these guys, you're more over limestone and hard bottom than you are like real rocky bottom, which is an indication of what I'm seeing on the, on the sonar to where I'm over hard bottom and I'm in between some of the rocks. So this is a pretty, pretty large area that I found just added to the waypoints. Like I said before, what I'm doing is I'm hooking this bait on the top of the head, right in the hard part, almost right between the eyes and then come through. And pitch them forward. And let them go. What happened is they, they stopped they stopped hitting the bait when it was hooked through the nose down. So I started hooking the bait through the bottom lip up and it just immediately, as soon as it gets to the bottom, they're on it. Get better gag. Right now, we're about 26 minutes away from the, from the major feeding time. I have a good feeling about this spot. The tide is starting to slow down just a little bit. So as soon as that, that major comes in, that tide will start slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And it will allow me to start chumming. So I'm, I'm pretty anxious to do that. Still haven't caught a snapper though, which is kind of surprising. A lot of people ask me, you know, why do I use such light braid? I've got eight pound braid on here that we sell and that I've been using for a while. And one of the main reasons why I'm using such light braid and Chad uses 10 pound is that when the tide is ripping the way it is, is that the heavier the braid or heavier the mono, what happens is it creates a giant loop in your, in your line when you're letting your bait down to the bottom. And what that means is that that loop is going out like this and your bait is back this way. So you're letting out line, letting out line, letting out line and you think, well, I'm on the bottom and you don't feel anything and you reel up and your bait's gone. You do it again, you reel up, your bait's gone. Well, what's happening is you're not getting the feel of the bottom because there's so much loop in your line. I've seen it time and time again when people get on our boat and they've got th even 20 to 30 pound braid, it cause, it gives it that resistance in the water. Now you've got to remember eight pound has about a 20 pound breaking strength with braid and 10 pound is even more. So that's why we use, plus it's fun. I mean, yes, we get broken off and we use the 20 pound leader. That's what I'm using today. We get broke off, but at the same time we get a, a lot more bites. Now, there's times that we, we can up our tackle. We did it last week and Chad was putting 23 inch grouper in the boat, one right after the other. The unfortunate part is we couldn't get anything over 23 inches. So you can up your tackle, especially if, they're, if the bite is on, they don't care, they're gonna eat. But when it comes to finesse fishing, especially in a ripping tide like this, I really like the lighter, the lighter braid um, it holds up very well. It's very strong, it's strong enough for what we do. Nine out of 10 times when we get broken off, it's because of the leader. 
Again, you can jump up on leader size when the bite is really, really good, but when it's when it's tough, we've done it time and time again with people on the boat. When they jump to 30 or 40 pound leader, they're gonna get one bite to our 10. So if you if you don't want to deal with the break-offs, I suggest going higher. But if you if you want to deal with the break-offs and get more bites and have an opportunity to catch more fish, then that's what I would do is I would I would downsize my tackle. But that is one of the key reasons why we use the braid is because of that loop in the line, especially when the tide's running like this. Well, they're on the live bait now. Decent red grouper. Not bad. This is exactly what I'm looking for, right in there. You can see the fish on the bottom. Well, I just switched back to cut bait because I wasn't getting any bites and immediately I got bit. So what I'm doing is I'm using our 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. As you can see, I took three arm lengths of leader so I like to have a long leader so I'm constantly not retying the, the braid to the leader. How I connect my leader to my braid is I go through, I have a loop like this and I go through seven times forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what I do is I go reverse, I go back through the through the loop and reverse it twice, once, twice, so that allows it not to slip. Then I go back through the loop and tighten it down. And there you go. That's what I call the improved Albright knot. Then what I do is I take one of my, I'm using one ounce right now because it's, the tide is ripping so fast. I do an overhand knot, just like that. Overhand knot with the loop, go through the eye, come back through the loop, wrap it twice, once, twice, and back through, and there you go, a loop knot. It's one of my favorite, it's easy, it's quick. When people come into the shop, I think the number one question I get asked is, what size do we use and what color? Well, it, it depends on what the tide is doing. If the tide's ripping, I'm definitely using a one or a one and a quarter Stewie. If the tide is starting to slack off, I'll move to a, to a three quarter ounce and, or even a half an ounce. And to be all honest, in, in all honesty, the color hasn't really seemed to matter. It, they all disappear when it gets down to that 40 foot range. So color really hasn't seemed to make a difference. We catch them, one guy will be using yellow, the other guy will be using orange, and we'll catch the same amount of fish. Ooh! So, uh, color just doesn't seem to matter, but the size does. So 95% of the time we use one ounce, and the other we use three quarters, an ounce, or we free line if the tide is slack. So that's that's the number one question I get asked when, when people walk into the shop is what size and what color do we use? And that's what we use. Well, it's a lot of fun to be able to get out, a little do a little bit of scouting, found some new spots, uh, sent down the, the camera just to kind of show you what we're looking at. And uh, so you get a good feel of what the bottom is looking like. And uh, it's, it's really good. Um, we just got done fishing this spot, caught some fish. The bite was a little off, but you know, it is what it is, but at least I found some new areas. Let me show you what I was looking at here. You can see the rocks here, and you'll see that in the underwater footage. 
But again, uh, thank you for all the support. We really appreciate it. We've got a boat show coming up at the Tampa Fairgrounds. We're going to be at the Sunray Marine booth uh, the 26th, 27th, and 28th of this month of June. So if you get a chance to come out that weekend, come out and see us at the Sunray Marine booth. We're going to have jig heads, line, uh, braided line, stuff like that available. So if you get a chance, come on out. Again, June 26th, 27th, 28th, the Tampa Bay Boat Show, which is put on by the Tampa Bay Times at the fairgrounds. Again, good luck out there. And if you see us, stop by and say hey.